What the fuck? Mm. Mm. I'm sorry, I, I do apologize. Greetings, loyal viewers, and welcome to the first ever gargantuous Insta Thoughts of 2018. And I just got back from seeing Avengers Infinity War. Now, um. Yeah, I think that intro pretty much said it best. Um. I don't really uh, know what I can really say about this that everyone else hasn't already. I mean, I could basically sum up uh, sum up what I pretty much think from this uh, review from Michael O'Sullivan from Washington Post. Avengers Infinity War takes you places that most superhero movies don't, and where, and where you may not want to go. I think that perfectly about sums it up there, but for the sake of this video, I will continue. So, um, and bearing in mind, I'm not going to be giving too much away for this movie because, well, for one, I just saw it, so I can't really... Uh, point to every little thing that just happened off the top of my head, but I will be giving you some idea of what you're going to be in for. For people who have joked over the years that uh, this series, this franchise, despite even, even some of its most hardcore fans would say there really isn't that much stakes being put behind it, even in the most uh, risque of situations, and I will admit uh, I was kind of that person in a more cynical way anyway. Um, this movie, even by that, even by that mindset, completely took me by surprise. I mean, granted, I knew some people were gonna die, and I'm not gonna give away who, but just be prepared for that if you're going in for this, because I, I, I mean, be really, really prepared to see death, because you're gonna be seeing that quite a bit, especially in the places where you least expect it. And I'm definitely, and once again, I'm not gonna give away when uh, you should be the most prepared for that. But let's just say. I think you'll have a very good feeling of when if you go by my by my uh, by what I think here. Overall, I thought this movie, and I'm mostly speaking as a uh, Marvel fan here. Um, I thought this movie was a lot was both really fun and even kind of uh, kind of dramatic at times. And not to say that the MCU couldn't be dramatic, but the, here they really take that to the next level. Like they really really pull no punches in this one which is which is really is really good but at the same time given that we all know at this point this is the first parter that it unfortunately fall, falls into the same symptoms that fall a lot of first parters or heck even an entry in a trilogy or franchise of a movie in general that follows tight continuity and as such uh, the movie ends I'm not gonna again I'm not gonna say how it ends but let's just say it ends, it ends on a uh, bit of the uh, typical first part or cliffhanger, with giving us some idea of what to expect uh, between now and leading up to part two in the post credit scene. Which, uh, knowing, knowing, knowing who they're going to bring based on the uh, symbol that they show at the very end of the post credit scene, I could safely say I'm looking forward to that. I'm also... I should also say, for the record, with how much this movie took me by surprise in many of the best ways possible, and by that, it like kind of, kind of tugged at my uh, heartstrings a little bit. Um, I could safely say that I'm definitely looking more forward to the more funny, uh, not so serious stuff, like Deadpool, for example, coming out on May 18th. I'm definitely, I mean, I'm definitely going to be checking that out within a few weeks. And I'm definitely checking, and I'm definitely at this point checking out The Incredibles 2. That's probably the movie that I, alongside with this one, I, I would say I'm probably, I was probably just as, if not even arguably more excited for it because, well, it's been 14 long years since we've had a sequel to The Incredibles. And we're finally now getting that. But we're not talking about The Incredibles, we're talking about Avengers Affinity War. And it is amazing, okay? It's amazing. Especially if you, if you love this kind of stuff and you want to finally see where this uh, franchise is going, then this movie will definitely not disappoint, for the most part. But yeah, this movie will definitely not disappoint you. Um, it definitely, with the ending, it kind of raises the question of how this, uh, how, uh, infin uh, how things are going to wrap up with part two, uh, next, next year, I think. Um, there's definitely going to be a few, quite a few standalone movies that are coming out in between that point. Like, uh, like with one who, uh, you know, I'm sure you probably all know who it is. It's, it's frigging, it's frigging Captain Marvel. Okay. It's frigging Captain Marvel. That's one of them. But we're also between the, between this are getting a Ant-Man and Wasp standalone movie, which is nice because 
uh, Wasp and even Hawkeye, I might add, were not actually in this. I assume maybe they originally were, but as far as I, as far as far as I know, and this is definitely further proof that, um, much like some big blockbusters, uh, this one did not. This one has a few scenes from trailers that actually didn't make it into the final cut. Um, for instance, uh, a little bit of spoiler: uh, Hulk actually, the Hulk himself is barely even in this, and. Uh, spoiler alert: He doesn't actually come out within the climax of the movie. In fact, there. In fact, from what I can tell, there the the army has all their fight in the fields of Wakanda and not in the forest, like the trailer led us to believe. Not that I'm complaining, of course. It was hilariously ironic to see him uh, in the uh, Hulk Buster suit, the Iron Man Hulk Buster suit. That was that was hilariously ironic. Um. And all speaking of hilariously ironic, it was weird seeing this uh, giant dude who was played funny enough by by Peter Dinklage. That I thought was hilarious. <laughs> and speaking of which, this movie, especially with the scenes involving the Guardians of the Galaxy, who yes are in a fair amount of this movie, thank God. Um, they get a, they get a, about a, they get a lot of good laughs as you would expect. So. Again, I really feel bad. I, I do really feel bad that I can't really give too much away, aside from maybe a few minor things here and there. But that's just that's that's how good movies like this are for me. That I don't want to ruin uh, any any uh, joy for people who want to go in this uh, unspoiled. Um, so overall, uh, what did I think of this movie again? I thought this movie was great, especially considering that again I am a I'm a comic book nerd. I am. I especially, I, I especially love the Marvel heroes, and it's really nice to finally see how far. It's finally f great to see how far they come, and how how far they're also, in a way. And again, I'm not going to say how of how they uh, come crashing down. Eh, that's the thing about this movie. And just to give you a little bit of a hint, though, you guys can probably f probably figure it out. <laughs> um, Let's just say the movie ends on one of the most uh, ambiguously depressing notes for a Marvel movie that I've seen in a long time. Oh, also, it was really, uh, and also it was really cool to see other faces we haven't seen in years. Like, um, one last minor spoiler: uh, Red Skull is apparently still alive, and he's apparently the keeper of the Soul Stone. Who would have thought, huh? And from, but from what I could tell, though, he wasn't played by Hugo Weaving, which is understandable. I assume Hugo Weaving was upset that he, that that he played more of a uh, more of a standard kind of villain. Um, I don't know who they got him, but from what I could tell, he he was a pretty decent replacement. Also, uh, of an important note, the makeup on him is definitely a little better than it was. It definitely looks more fleshy than it did before because that was one of the problems I had with the first Captain America, and that is his makeup was not very impressive to look at. So. It is nice that they're uh, learning from their mistakes and they're improving upon things. So, yeah. Overall, this is a movie that, especially if you're like me and you love Marvel, this is definitely a must see. Uh, this is another movie where I was completely invested from beginning to end. And just to give you an idea of how invested I was, uh, this was probably the first movie in in a long time. Like, I'm saying like five to ten years uh, minimum, where I actually had to get up to go take a take a piss. And like, and like, friggin, I freaking went as fast as I could uh, from there and back again from the bathroom. Uh, I was bolting it between there and back from the bathroom, from the men's room, because uh, I was that invested. Um, at the very least, I didn't make the crazy uh, mistake of sitting from beginning to end all constipated like I did throughout War of the Planet of the Apes. War. Yeah, I think it's worth it. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I. If you case, in case you guys don't remember, I was co I was consistently constipated throughout the majority of the movie. But I didn't get up because I was too invested in seeing what was going on, what was going to happen, so to speak. So overall, I really enjoyed it. So the King Gargantuas, and I'll see you all next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to me if you want to see more videos like this. Follow me on Twitter at King Gargantuous if you want to know what I'm up to. 
And if you want to support videos like this, plus the many other ideas that I have in the near future, be sure to support me on patreon.com slash Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you all next time.